Okay, perfect. Yeah, and last video we went over general elemental stuff. Now we'll go into more uh, detailed guide for the current version of Elementalist. You know, what, what talents you want to go, um, how you want to play, uh, what your play style should be, whatever. Um, maybe... Yeah. yeah, this in a pre-made. Um, the thing about this uh, game in particular is, um, I'll be honest, Zerk, especially the early and mid-game, wasn't really played very or the, the Zerk didn't play according to how you should play against Elementalist. So in this um, replay, you will see that for the most time, the early to mid-game, I'm just left alone. Um... I still think it's a good replay show. But anyway, the, again, Zerk didn't play this perfectly by any means. Um, I still think it's a fairly good display uh, because this is what you will mostly encounter in the public lobby. Maybe the Zerk will be a little bit more aggressive towards you, but for the most part, you're going to be left alone and can just farm for the entire game. Um, so this game is mostly to show what you can do. Like, you know, let's say you get into the late game, now what? kind of uh, game. Okay. So I'll start off the game, Zerg spawns. Um, I stay a little bit of away from the middle, because if, if I stood here and I attacked the Zergling, all of the Zerglings would immediately aggro me, I would have to run away, I wouldn't be able to outrun them, they would attack me, I would feel a lot of gas, and at some point I would use my global blink and I just wasted it. Um, so don't do that, stay a little bit further away. You don't have to stand, like some people I see stand very far away, uh, you don't have to do that, you can stay relatively close to the middle. Um, just make sure you do it somewhere where the links tend to spread out a lot, right? When they go through this area, some of the Zerglings will go here, some of the Zerglings will go in this direction, some of the Zerglings will go here. So I can position myself accordingly that you know the Zerglings won't hit me. This also applies to like Stukov, Artanis, all those other classes. Yes. Yeah. General. Okay. So Zerglings come. I see them through my radar, so I can... I, oh, I think I fucked this early game up too. Oh yeah, this will be a really nice showcase. GM, by the way. Yeah, I fucked this up royally. See, I dude, this is what I talked about in the other video. I I didn't even lose my entire HP, but if we look at Zerk, there are 19 gas. Yeah, don't don't do this. <laughs> Play better than me, please, for the love of God. I lose a little bit more HP here. Uh, yeah, and they have they have 25 gas enough for hatch. At like two minutes and 15 seconds. Okay, well, I run away here because all I'm doing is running away. Uh, maybe to go a little about what I did there in the early game. I killed one Zerkling, then got my fire orbs. This is what I do immediately and have three fire orbs around you. Because, as I discussed in the last video, this is enough to one-shot Zerklings. So this should be your main priority. Get the fireball and three fireballs, uh, three fire orbs around you. That's the first course of action. After that, you know, you can get your quest real quick. And after that, you can get your talents and your uh, attributes. Now, what you want to do is you kill five circlings, then, and then you get fireball. Uh, because that's one of the spells you want to get, and the other one you see right here, fireball and iceball, those are your main spells to get. You start off with fireball, obviously, and then go into iceball. Um, the attributes you get, like strength, intelligence, and agility, I always start, or I nowadays always start off with 12 intelligence, because this allows me to recombine my spells twice, so I have both Ice Ball and Fireball, because every time you recombine spells and you get new orbs, it wastes some energy. Um, that way I have enough energy to do that and cast a spell. So if Kerrigan ran after me right now, I could just use my Ice Ball and get away. Right, so 12 points, sometimes even 15 if I'm, I don't know, against like Brack or a Kerrigan that I know will use, uh, will use Mana Drain on me or something, but for the most part, 12 Intelligence. Um, yeah, after that you want to go to about 30 Agility, and before that you can put a few points into Strength, but first objective, get some Intelligence, about 12, uh, and then 30 Agility, because as we discussed before, uh, it's logarithmic scale, you don't get too much out of, uh, too much value out of it the more points you have into it, so just get a few, uh, a lot of points early, because it helps you with your farming. But at some point, you stop and never look back. 
Okay, we are at about five minutes. I didn't use my global blink yet, and I saw a lot of zirklings here on the map. Um, my course of action here is use my global blink, because in a few moments I will lose it anyway. Uh, even if I'm going to feed a little bit, and use my spells to kill quite a few zirklings. Um, it's worth it for me. I scale harder than Zerk does off of this. See, I killed some stuff here. I got quite a bit of XP. Um, I didn't get all of the gas because I lost HP, but that's absolutely fine. I got a lot, a lot of value here. Right. Um, as far as talents go, by the way, the first one you want to do, untouched. I've, I already have four points into this. Um, very useful throughout the entire game. This is the first one you want to max. After that, last eight. As you see, I have one point in last eight because I'm not full HP right now. I want to get my HP back faster. Um, yeah, and, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, maxing out first on touch, then last eight, and then I'll go into some other talents. But that's not yet. As far as quests go, first uh, catch them all, one point, then one point to Zerg Fest, one point to staying healthy. Uh, and once you did that, you put two more points in to catch them all. Uh, then, you know, as soon as you can, one to studying hard and one to un unscratched. Um, as previously discussed, you want to get one point to most of the quests because you can then fulfill the objective faster. Um, but the one you want to focus on is studying hard. So I will get four points into studying hard. Then I will unlock the next row, put one point into everything, uh, and finish studying hard as soon as I can. Yeah, the general game style is just running around, trying to keep my farm stacks up. Um, if survivors harass with me and are very aggressively next to creep, I would be here too. Um, they're not though, so it's completely fine for me to just walk around, try to keep my farm stacks up. I level pretty hard here. Um, a good rule of thumb about what level you want to be at what point is if you are... A rule I made for myself is if I'm, you know, at level 20 at 11 minutes, then then I'm, then I'm doing good. I'm not doing perfect, but that's about my average game. Or, you know, even if I'm at 11.30, level 20, that that's good. Uh, you will see in this game, I'm already level 18 at 9 minutes. Um, this game went more than just well. Right, I think I'll, yeah, hit level 20 here in one moment. Um... Yeah, attributes, I finished my 30 agility. I'm now putting a few more points into strength. What I want to focus on next is about 30 intelligence and 30 strength. And once I hit that, I put most of my points for the rest of the game just into intelligence. This will come very much in handy, especially in this game. Uh, one of the th things I did right here, by the way, is I already put a point to creeper ass because I realized, okay, it's Fagor and I can see his radar on the map the entire time. So I can harass creep fairly safely. Um, you can also do that if your team harasses against other defenders, however, it's usually the norm that you wait for your team to also be able to harass. Okay, right here, do some quick thinking. I can kill some of these if I cast a meteor. Uh, yeah. And all in all, not too much happening. Uh, what I, I noticed right now, okay, wait, I have a lot of, I have a ton of money in the bank. Um, let me drop some orbs. Because my, uh, yeah, my term of action is if I can drop the orbs uh, for 2,000 minerals, or, you know, that give me around 3,000 minerals stashed, then I'm going to do it. This one, I think, has about 9,000 minerals stashed in it. But you see right now, I have, again, 9,000 minerals. I will harass creep here for a moment, and then as soon as I go away, I can drop some more stashed orbs. Yeah, which I do right now. Try to keep my farm stacks up at all time, obviously. And I drop one here. Um, in the meantime, what quests do I go? Um, I By now, I maxed out studying hard. Uh, what I do right after that is I max out catch them all. And once you did that, you or in the current meta, you want to maximize the amount of farm income you get, which you do by maxing out extra salary. Um, you don't do it right away because you can still put points into never enough. Uh, but 
extra salary is the one you want to focus on next. And once you max that out, you can max out want to be rich and never enough. Um, the most efficient way is to put points into both of them equally. Right? So if you have two points and they're both at 1-1, one, one, then you put them to 2-2. Two, two. And not one, uh, and you don't have one two points and one none. Uh, I don't go for any pay time off here because, or I actually went for one more point um, because I realize I already have my creep harass quest. So as long as I stay relatively close to creep, I can just, um, yeah, I can just go ahead and attack a creep tumor to keep my stacks up. So. It's it's fairly easy that way, and I don't need to run around chasing zerglings. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna max that out next, and then what you will see this game or the current strategy is to go. Well, obviously magical interest because I won't have a lot of uh, income. Uh, but also demolisher. Demolisher. If I kill buildings, I get a lot of money for it. Uh, and you can currently combine that with Meteor. If you Meteor buildings, um, the cost efficiency is good enough that you can at least make most of them money back. But most importantly, you go towards mid, you Meteor a bunch of their buildings, and, you know, Zerg just lost a ton of eco, and you just run away in safety. Um, that's a fairly good trade for you. And you will see me doing that in a while, right? But before that, I keep pressing creep, I keep my stacks up, I'm at level 40, at about 16 minutes. Uh, keep talking about stashed orbs everywhere. Obviously a little bit out of the way, because I want to make sure that Kerrigan doesn't find them. If Kerrigan's somewhat close to me, then, you know, I might not want to drop them. Just some things to keep in mind. Uh, as far as my, oh, by the way, as far as my spells go, at some point, you know, when... I realize, okay, Zerk has, may have some upgrades now, and Kerrigan could come and kill me. I change my spells to Fire Orb, uh, from Fireball and Ice Ball to Mirage and Ice Ball. Mirage, you should just have it up. Uh, so in case the enemy comes and you see the Hunter approaching you, you cast it immediately, you can spread your Mirages out safely, and they basically can't really catch you. Um, this somewhat reflects my talents. Uh, as soon as I finish my... You know, these two, put one point into Illusionist, as I always do, and then max out Versatility. I should put one point into Visionary here. Um, my course of action would be max those two out, like last eight and untouched. One point into Illusionist, one point into Visionary, and then max out Versatility. After that, burn them all. And from this point onwards, I usually max out Visionary and Illusionist, because those help me fairly well to stay safe. Okay, you will see right here, boom, it starts. I put a few points into Demolisher and I start uh, dropping some meters. This meter didn't, I didn't really have a lot of multipliers, so that's what I should have done. Put some more multipliers into this so my meter actually kills buildings. Didn't here, but that really just means I have to try again in a moment. Yeah, so in this early to mid game, my strategy is or mid to late game, my strategy is get to the creep, meter a bunch of shit, and run away. And that's it. If the Zerg does come close to me with a lot of units, um, obviously my course of action is to go Mirage, um, but also to have three ice orbs around me. Uh, because what they do is they increase my armor, they increase um, my damage reduction. So basically, if I have three ice orbs around me, I'm fairly safe. Uh, this is always what you want to do if an enemy hunter is coming close to you. And it also gives you cooldown reductions for your escape, skill, uh, escape spells, which is pretty neat. Um, something I forgot to mention, which I'm very sorry for, but I will clear out now. Um, the orbs I go, I always I start up with Fire Orb, which I mentioned at the start. Then Ice Orb, so I can get the Ice uh, Ball. And then Storm Orb, just so I have every spell available and I have the ability to cast Mirage. Yeah, here in the background you see I keep metering the eco. Um, it will turn out this game that the damage I deal is still fairly minor because I just macro well. Um, but, you know, that just is at the side. Um, yeah, and I max out Ice Orb first and secondary uh, Fire Orb. Ice Orb, um, 
partially because of the damage reduction, um, but a big part for me is, uh, especially in bases, um, the cooldown reduction you get from ice orbs is kind of insane. Yeah, Chewie left here. Uh, it may have seemed like you know I just muted Stephanie left, but he actually had to go in game. He mentioned it before that he has a limited amount of time. And he was one of the so it... Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a rage quit. It wasn't a rage quit. At least according to him. Okay, here he comes. I you know immediately cast Mirage. You see, I can use my blink here. I can use my blink here. I swap back and forth. This is something you'll get used to when you play Elementalist a bit. Um, yeah, just your continuous swapping back and forth between your mirages uh, and having them active. That's really, besides, you know, uh, recombining spells constantly, uh, one of the things that makes a good elementalist player. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, I maxed out my farming uh, quest a long time ago. Then I went into magical interest. I maxed demolish as well. So right now, every time I kill something, I get a lot of money back. Um, but I also keep stashing all the time, as you will see, right? Like I just stashed about 60 or 80,000 minerals here um, for later on. I, I keep in mind that I can still keep scaling. Yeah, so right now, keep running on creep, keep metering the enemy's work base down. More and more and more. Um, this game will especially be a pretty big showcase as to what Mirage can do. Um, y you'll see this a lot more in, well, with the game progressing, but Mirage is an absolutely OP spell. Always use it. Or try to try to get used to it, because the value you can, you can get out of, it, out of it is absolutely insane. Okay, so it comes for me, I use Mirage, you know, I spread up my Mirage a little bit, I blink because I got the Talent Illusionist, and I'm safe. Boom, I swap back, because you can swap back and forth, because I have my ice orbs, uh, or I had my ice orbs around me, my cooldown reduction was fairly low. Um, by this point in time, as soon as I started wrestling, obviously I had some multiplayer, so I can, so my uh, meter actually kills buildings. But yeah, right now I'm just harassing creep, trying to get a good positioning, and killing Zerg stuff. Yeah, as far as my attributes go, as you see, I mentioned the 30 strength, 30 agility, and the rest into intelligence. This will very much come in handy later on. Um, you can do that partially because of the cooldown reduction, obviously, but also partially because of um, because of the mana, or the maximum energy, and the energy regeneration. Those are going to be pretty huge factors, especially this game. But yeah, right now I keep dropping orbs. At this point, like, we thought we had the game won. So we didn't all play it too serious. But it's always important to keep going. Here, I send my Mirage into mid. I swap, uh, see Kerrigan. But since I have three ice around me, my Mirage is up again, so I don't really have to panic. Still cast my Meteor. I actually missed the Hive here. Blink my thing. Doesn't matter. I have three ice ops around me. My cooldown reduction is insane. I can cast Mirage again. Blink it up. Swap. Wait a moment. Use Mirage again. You know, blink, swap. This is your course of action. If you have three ice orbs around you and some cooldown multipliers, it's you, you don't really die unless you have money problems. Which, if you make her well, you're good. Right? I keep dropping orbs. Having money is important. Okay, and here, Duck dies. I thought it was GG here. Then I realized we still have an Ares and a Technician. <laughs> so now suddenly this game turns into, or this game turns from, okay, you know, we harass the Zerk a little bit, but mainly we defend Zerk attacks and uh, wait, uh, into, oh fuck, I have to kill Zerk now because otherwise they're gonna kill my teammates very quickly and there's nothing I can do. Um, so my strategy immediately here shifts and I go into Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm, uh, what it does we discussed previously, um, my strategy here is to have Mirage and Lightning Storm. Uh, and I cast Mirage before I get to the enemy, and then I cast Lightning Storm. So, you know, I don't zap him many times, or that many times that I run out of mana or out of energy. So I have nothing. See it right here? I used it. Move one of the Mirages back so I can swap back to it. 
keep going in back and out. I dealt, I think, like 20k damage here. Have three ice orbs around me, so my rush uh, immediately works again. Boom. And swap around a little bit. Uh, yeah. What do I want to mention? Oh yeah, wh what I did wrong right there um, is I didn't have three ice orbs around me. That's the perfect play. You want to have three ice orbs around you, so if you you know, because when you use Lightning Storm, the enemy can usually attack you. Um, always have three ice around you, so you're tanky to actually, or tanky enough to actually be able to take some hits. Yeah, here, just keep recombining spells, keep doing stuff. Here, Zerg is close to me, I use Mirage, and immediately three ice. Or, not here, because I actually have to run away first. Okay, three ice orbs, Mirage cooldown is back in no time. I think I used this Mirage, though, blink up here, swap again. I tell you, if you know how to use Mirage, it's it's game over for Zerk, for the most part. Currently, even use blink here, really, I don't know why I did it. Just to show I have it, I guess, but I could have just used Mirage and blink down. Yeah, now Zerk F2s. Feeds me a little bit here, but at this point it really doesn't matter. Yeah. My strategy, as ever mentioned, get some... Oh, I still want to get some levels, because I actually have no... Or basically no levels in Storm Orb. And the more levels I have, the more damage my Lightning Storm will deal, but also the more it will cost. Um, so if I get some more levels, I can kill Zerg faster. Which is my strategy right now. Keep running around. Though. Yeah, Zerg is here. I should go three... Okay. I should have went three ice orbs here. I didn't. That was a mistake. Uh, the problem is Carrion is not dumb. He dashes out, and yeah, that kind of that's kind of a problem for me. Um, my only option here is to keep doing that and deal damage little by little. Uh, even though it's very, you know, I, I think with my last attack I dealt like two thousand damage or four thousand maybe for like twenty twenty four thousand minerals, which is not a lot, but you know, I keep trying. So rush to her, swap, use it. He mana drains me, perfect reaction, and lucky for me, I still have my Mirages up, can blink away, and I'm safe. And right here you will see why the intelligence is so important. Um, usually I would be mana drained here and there's nothing I can do, but since I have so much intelligence, my energy regeneration is accordingly high. So I can basically go right back into action. I look for Fagor here. Uh, yeah, try to go for him. I actually messed up. Swap around a little bit with my Mirages. Try to get better positioning. Oh, here I jumped on Fagor. Fagor killed my Mirages. I have Mirage up again. Yeah, and as you see, I dealt a lot of damage in the, these attacks. And that is continuously my strategy. Um, Now, I think here is a point in the game where I actually fuck up royally. And this is one of the few times I think Fagor at least had a very decent chance of killing me. Because here, for some reason, I swap back. But I guess I forgot I had the other Mirages. Yeah, if he went for me here, like, especially at this point, I have no mana or, like, no energy or anything. Um, he could have maybe killed me. But then again, no, I saw the Mirages. I just forgot him in the moment. Yeah, anyway, Kerrigan comes towards me, Lightning Storm, and Mirage. Blink and swap. Like, at this point, I was mana drained two moments ago, but because I have so, such high intelligence, I have such high energy regeneration, that I could just use Mirage again. Mirage, blink down, swap away. Again, blink up here, I think. Oh, I made a se separate Mirage, then this Mirage again, I blink up here, I swap back. It's it's very <laughs> yeah it's dumb it's dumb indeed very easy to stay alive if you reach a certain point like at this because you see I've eight hundred thousand minerals basically nine hundred thousand uh, if it didn't go this way like if I didn't have this much money then I couldn't spam mirages that cost me twenty five thousand minerals you have to keep that in mind like this is a pretty ideal game here I try to zapper again he runs away but. Little by little, I do actually get him down. So he's down to 7,000 now. Yeah, I was thinking about swapping to him there. 
Here I use a meteor for no real reason in particular. <laughs> but that one cost me like 93,000 minerals. Yeah, not worth it. Okay, go for him. Swap. This was also insanely dumb. I should not have done that. I should have waited for my three ice orbs here. But I realized, or I remember that I still had a Mirage, so I can swap out. Here, as you see, I was pretty much 0 HP. But because of my um, last 8 talent, and me having 27 stacks, I'm almost full back to full HP. Very useful. Yeah, I think here on the minimap, I see that Faye goes around. So I try to sneak up on him, drop a big meter. Because I've tried Lightning Storm before, but he knows and dodges it. Unlucky for me. Yeah, and I think around this time, one of the interesting things is if you have high enough cooldown reduction, well, as you obviously maybe saw before, um, you can have multiple Mirages alive at the same time. So right now, I think I'm... Oops. I think I'm almost maxed out. Yeah, I maxed out my other multipliers, but I also have quite a few points into the cooldown multiplier. And by having three points in Ice Orb, or here it doesn't even matter, but I can just keep spamming Mirages. So right now I have... These four plus two additional ones, six mirages. Run up to Fagor, swap back, right? Activate this swap ability. Use my lightning storm. I managed to kill him. Yeah. Wow. GG. Um, I actually yeah. became semi tons of, damage, tons of gas. Yeah. Um, um, um yeah. this game basically a showcase of get Mirage and learn how to use it. If if you don't understand it right away or you know, you're a little having some issues, it's okay. Just go into a sandbox game and practice. Because the value you can get out of this, as I hope you saw in this game, is kind of insane. Mm -hmm. Can we see a quick overview of like your base stats, your talents, uh, your quests? Yeah, they're your here. Okay. In the top left, those are my stats. I uh, I meant your base stats, like you have. So you have 30 oh, strength. Oh yeah, yeah. okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 30 yeah. strength. I could have usually I go even up to 40 or 50, but I keep it. You know, I not more than that. 30 strength this game, 30 agility. I usually don't go beyond, and 174 intelligence. Um, as far as orbs go, my orbs are mixed out: fire and ice, storm five points. Um, wait, I have to go back a little because I. For elementalist, you can't actually click on all of those things. Well, yeah. No talents. I I went for all of the farm and income one, uh, farm income ones, demolisher and the other one. It, what I get from this point on is basically irrelevant. Like I think, yeah, I put points into return of investment because I did end up killing a few units, and I did think that we were gonna do a base here with spirit. But yeah, um, talents, last eight untouched. Uh, I also meant, maxed out Illusionist and Visionary, which helped me a ton later on. Um, versatility, obviously, something I maxed out very early, and burn them all. Do I have anything else? Oh yeah, I also have Elemental Overload here. Yeah, it can be very useful if I cast a lot of spells um, in a very short time frame. I don't think it really did anything this game, though. May have as well spent on something else. Maybe storm up mastery so I can clear some creep better uh, earlier on in the game. That would be something to think about. Um, yeah, no, that's that's it though. Yep. Okay. Those are my stats. Yeah. That was definitely a interesting game. Uh, that was an interesting game. Sucks some people died, but I guess it makes for a good replay. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, Car, he was basically solo zerging this from 20 yeah, minutes yeah, onwards. Yeah. He had quite the comeback. If it wasn't for Elementalist, he would have won here. The shame for him, but oh, what you gonna do? Yeah. I wonder how it would have turned out too if you were defending the base from all the units, because I, I feel like you would just been able to like annihilate everything. For the most part, yes. Um, I think in the last replay we went over, like the one that's still in the guide, that was my strength build, and we kind of had a scenario like that. Yeah, you except had a lot spells. less intelligence, and they ended up breaking. Yeah. The issue if you're defending a base is usually the money. Mm. 
money and your teammates not being able to pump out enough units because it still takes some time for you to you know keep making keep rotating spells and sometimes you don't have the best spell available and then you need to swap it out and it's a very high stress situation in in which you can yeah. easily you know mess up a little bit and every time you mess up the zerg can get a lot of like a very big push forward into the base that you can't really allow this is definitely a good replay though because it shows like how you can solo carry without the use of a base or other people attacking like that was pretty much just you go in the middle you're killing yeah. all their eco you're trying to snipe their hives and some thems and whatever. And then at some point, happens. change of yeah. plans, just killing yeah. the enemy straight away. You got the high enough level, enough money, and you're killing them. Yeah. Carrying just straight up. Yep. And, like, they played it well, too. Like, pub zergs are going to, like, stay in the zone too long. They're not going to energy drain you. Yeah. Um, well, um, something to mention there. We actually went to discuss this effort because, well, obviously after a game like this, um, <laughs> some people are going to have a little heated. Um, what Carr did very well that game is dashing out and mana draining me. Yeah, he did yeah. that absolutely perfectly. The thing he could have definitely done better, though, is bury Fager. If he did that, I wouldn't have been able to find him on the map. And I don't think, I don't know if I would have been able to kill him here. All right. Like, Technician says Blink here, so he would have been able to get away from this, but, you know, every second is crucial. I mean, he's solo Zerg, too, so it's like, that's just like yeah. having a new obviously partner, kind of. Yeah, three. but I mean, like one of the Zergs and pubs are usually pretty weak, and you can just abuse them. Or... <laughs> For sure. What would you have done if this was it's against the Hulka? What you just would go after the defender or what? Honestly, I mean, okay, well, yeah, but also not necessarily. You can also go against the Hulka. Really? You can't like obviously get as it. many hits off on him. Yeah. Um. Like well, the the main difference against the Hulka is the early game, though, because he will chase you. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, the value he gets is very big, because he feed a lot. The difference would be, um, if you're up against the Hucker in the early game, maybe just to mention that here at least, um, try everything you can to get the fireball before he attacks you, and actually get to use the fireball on some Zerglings. Because that way, you usually get enough XP to put some more points into Untouched, and that way... You know, you can kind of, you can't outrun them, but you have a lot more time. You have more time for your cooldowns, like to get Ice Ball, uh, and then Ice Ball away. You can get more intelligence, maybe you can even get Mirage in time. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. That's the very, very uh, <laughs> cut down version of what you would do against uh, a Diag in the early game. Yeah, yep. that's it though. Alright, sounds good. Hope people learned a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.